that better. says I have sound. So, okay. Apparently it's just a loose connection. All right, so again, I am Ranger Russ. We're at the Meg's Point Nature Center. And today, instead of going to do a traveling program to a park because of the thunderstorms rolling through Connecticut, we're going to be doing a craft. We're going to learn about, uh-oh, Okay, so it seems to be working. We're gonna learn how to make a snake out of an egg crate. So you will need an egg crate, a pair of scissors, a pencil, some paint, and some yarn, okay? The first step. Now, hopefully most of you out there enjoy reptiles and particularly snakes. The first step we're going to do is we need to cut up the egg crate. So we're going to go cut off these excess pieces because we really want where the eggs nest. So these bits you can get rid of. Make sure you recycle them. Next, you're going to take the egg crate itself, the little cups that hold the eggs. These cups are very useful. There are lots of different crafts you can do. I had a staff person, Kai, that loved to put uh, soil in these and then you put seeds in them. And when the plant starts to grow, you can put the whole thing right into the ground. So that's a really cool idea as well. All right. So when you get the cup, you need to trim the edges a little bit. So you just want to trim around like so. I see someone saying they don't like, like snakes. I'm going to be talking about snakes as I go here. So maybe we can uh, teach you about snakes. Maybe you won't be as scared of them or you won't dislike them anyway. So we just trim around because really the most important part is this edge here needs to be smooth. And in my example, they're not all really smooth, so it doesn't turn out as nice. So when you have the nice little cup like these, now you get to do some painting. So, um, Typically, I like to do a snake that, or a pattern that is similar to a snake that I know. So I chose red. I was going to do a rat snake, I mean a, uh, a milk snake, but when I started doing this, I realized that the black paint that we have is so old and diluted, it's actually turned green. Um, so... I'm going to do it anyway. It's going to be a green and red snake instead of a black and red. So I've painted some red stripes on there. And now we're going to do what was going to be our black. So one of the common misconceptions in Connecticut, people confuse the milk snake with a copperhead. A copperhead is coppery in color. It's going to have dark copper and light copper stripes. A milk snake, they come in two different colors in Connecticut. They can be red and white or brown and gray, but they also have black. A copperhead doesn't have black. Its coppery color could get really dark, but it's not going to be black. So that's why I wanted to use black, but notice the black doesn't look so black anymore. So I think I'm gonna to have to run out and get some, some better black craft paint. Okay, so if you see black on a snake, then you know you don't have a copperhead. All right, so here's one that I did ahead of time. Um, actually, we'll use this one because I haven't punched a hole. You're going to use a pencil to poke a hole right in the center. It's 
pretty simple. You hear that little pop? Let's angle this down so you can see more what I'm doing. Okay. So once you have the hole there, your next step is you're going to want to tie a knot in the end of the string. Now I've already started the snake, so we've got this little string. Okay, and we're going to tie another knot right on the top. So, a little knot tying. I'm tying an overhand, which is usually the first step you use when you're tying your shoes. I fold the yarn in half, and then I tie an overhead with the yarn that's folded in half, and that's too long. There we go. So you don't want it very far, only about an inch from the knot that you tied the last time, and then you put that one on. Okay, so now I've punched a hole in there. You're going to take the yarn. You might want to tape up the end of the yarn. It'll go through a little easier, and it won't fray so much. You stick the, pull the yarn through there. And it didn't go all the way through. I only got one little bit of the yarn. You want all the yarn to go through. So another one of the snakes that gets confused in Connecticut is our northern water snake. And that actually gets confused for a snake that we don't have in Connecticut. People see a water snake and they think water moccasin, which is a venomous snake. It is a southern venomous snake, which doesn't come this far north. But because people are not aware of the snakes that we have in Connecticut, they see that northern water snake and they think that they've got a water moccasin. And unfortunately, people, when they see a venomous snake, they want to kill them. I'm not quite sure why a venomous snake... Um, needs to be killed where another one doesn't. I know it's more dangerous, but they are still useful parts of the food chain, of the environment. Okay, so you can kind of see that we're getting a little string of striped cups there. This is going to be the body of our snake. Okay. At the end, you can tie the little bit on the end there to make a tail. But, let's continue on. So people see the water moccasins, they think it's a venomous snake, and then unfortunately they want to kill them. Um, fear is, I think, the main reason that people want to kill any wildlife. Anytime someone encounters wildlife that they're afraid of, I think that's the, the main thing. So my objective is to teach people that... You should respect wildlife, but in most cases, you don't have to be afraid of it. And especially with the snakes of Connecticut, actually most of the time, the snakes of Connecticut, um, didn't tie the knot there, the snakes of Connecticut are not going to um, bite you unless you're asking for it. So... You shouldn't be scared of the snakes. You should definitely have a respect for them and give them the space that they require. Okay. So the other venomous snake that we have in Connecticut is the timber rattlesnake. So we've got copperheads and timber rattlesnakes. And the snake that gets confused for a rattlesnake, unfortunately, is the most rare, one of the most rare snakes, probably the most rare snake that we have in Connecticut. So the timber rattlesnake, there are estimated about 300 left in the state of Connecticut. It's a very rare snake. The hognose is also a rare snake, and most estimates have them less than 300. They're not listed as an endangered species. Connecticut has some rules about something being endangered. It's not the number of snakes, it's the a number of places where you can find the snake. But there are fewer hognose snakes than there are rattlesnakes in Connecticut. 
And unfortunately, when people see the behavior of a hognose snake, then they think they have a rattlesnake. And again, if they think it's a venomous snake, then they kill it. So, Clinton Child Care, hello over there. So, Clinton Child Care, we used to do a lot of um, programs with Clinton Child Care. Unfortunately, with the virus, we're still not able to do public programs um, here from the Nature Center. But hopefully soon we'll, we'll be able to do some sort of programming with you guys. And I notice you're saying that the red touching the black. So there is a saying, red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, no attack. Um, that really is only referring to two snakes that are found in Florida. The king snake, there's a Florida a king snake and a coral snake in Florida. The coral snake is actually the most venomous snake in North America. Um, but their venomous fangs are in the back and they actually have to chew pretty deep. They're a small snake, so they can't really bite and inject venom. They need to chew um, the uh, venom into you. So, but those are found in Florida, not this far up. But that's the saying, red on yellow kill a fellow. Okay, so you can just continue this. You could make the snake as long as you like. This is pretty thick, so a snake in Connecticut, if it were this thick, would probably be a five or six foot long snake. Um, but you can just continue going. Um, when you get to the end, where's the cup I'm going to use? So when you get to the end of a snake and you want to make the head, there are a few things you can do. Some people cut a mouth into it, and then you can stick a little tongue coming out. Remember to make your tongue a forked tongue. Um, I like to just paint the, the snake head the way that I would like it to look. So typically the pattern on a snake is going to change when it reaches the head. I will get back to the hog nose in a moment. Um, so the pattern will change a bit. I'm going to change it like so. Okay. So the hog nose, its behavior is what gets it confused for venomous snakes and what it does. Now, most snakes do this. When they get nervous, they twitch their tails. The first thing a hog nose does to defend itself is, is it rolls over and plays dead. But after that, it will actually begin to get aggressive. They rise up, they coil up and get ready to strike. They twitch their tails. And that twitching tail is telling you that the snake is nervous or scared. But very often that twitching tail happens in leaves and it sounds like a rattlesnake. Also, the hognose has a very thick bodied snake, which most of the venomous snakes in Connecticut are thicker bodied there we go. So, nice little face on our snake. Let's bring that red pattern up there and down here. So the rat, the hognose snake ends up sounding like a, a venomous snake and then people get really scared and they end up wanting to to kill them. Okay. So, three snakes in Connecticut very often get confused for venomous snakes. The water snake gets confused for a snake that we don't even have. The hognose snake get, gets confused for a rattlesnake. And the milk snake gets confused with a copperhead. So all of those snakes are actually not harmful. Um, they might hurt if they bite you, but it's not really going to kill you. And actually the venomous snakes that we have in Connecticut, 85% of the time a copperhead is not going to inject venom. And it's like 75% of the time a rattlesnake will not inject venom. Venom is used for food. And if it injects venom into 
something that it's scared of, it's not going to have venom for food. So that's what you need to think about. The venom, it takes a lot of energy to produce. And if a snake bites you, it's going to hurt. The venom actually takes a while to affect you. So you're going to react the same way being bitten by a snake, whether it injects its venom or not. It's going to hurt and you're not going to like it. You're going to move away. Hopefully you're going to move away from the snake and leave them alone. Okay, we're going to do one more and then I'll put the head on. So what I hope everyone learns, again, you keep respectful distance from a snake. Um, you're probably not going to run into an issue with the venomous snakes. Um, and I know it can be scary uh, finding a snake when you didn't expect to see it. Always my heart starts to race. I get very excited when I see a snake. Uh, and sometimes it startles me or scares me because I did not expect to see that snake. I may be working around the yard or moving a stone and then you see a snake and for a second you wonder what kind it is. Okay. So we're getting our little snake here. I pulled that one too far through. Let's put the head on there. So again, this project could take quite a while uh, if you want to make a really long snake. It can be a little challenging to get this yarn through the hole. But when you're done, you will have a nice little snake. I don't think it actually went through. There we go. So do we have any questions? How many times have you been bitten? Uh, I stopped counting at about a hundred snake bites. Um, Never been bitten by a, by a venomous snake. I have always been curious what it would be like to be bitten by a venomous snake. Uh, but I have not waited to give them a chance to bite me. I do not want to be bitten by a venomous snake. But, you know, but I say I've been bitten by venomous snakes. I've been bitten by other animals as well. It's, or not bitten by venomous snakes, but bitten by snakes. I've been bitten by many animals, and even turtles can bite if given the right opportunity. I was trying to save a snapping turtle. That bit me. Uh, cleaning a, a turtle's tank, I was scrubbing the bottom, and the turtle swam over and nipped me in the elbow. So those things will happen. And most of the time, almost every time that I've been bitten, I know exactly why, and it's my fault that I'm bitten. A lot of times with snakes... I used to, you know, do big programs. The snake lets you know before it's going to bite you. I've had enough. I need to be put down. And if you're aware of that, I don't know that I've ever been bitten um, in front of people. Actually, I, I was once. I had a program that I was doing, and I took out a garter snake, and it bit me right out of the bag. It just bit me. And I was kind of surprised because I had handled that snake before. Um, and before, and I immediately put, went, went to put it back in the pillowcase. But it bit me, I think, 16 times before I could get it back in the, in the pillowcase. It just kept biting over and over. The next day, it had babies. So that was my fault. I didn't realize that the snake was ready to have babies. Um, and I got bitten for it. So... You need to be aware of all of these things. So what you can do for a tail is reverse one of these and put it on. Uh, I didn't put that on first, so it's not going to work out quite the same way. But then you have a nice little snake. And again, look at a snake and try and match the color or pattern to a snake that you know or a snake that you really like. Uh, I like to do them that are snakes that are found in Connecticut. Uh, like most of the things that we have here at the Nature Center are found in Connecticut. Actually, everything 
that we exhibit in the Nature Center can be related to Connecticut. If it's not from Connecticut, it's an invasive or exotic species that is now found in Connecticut. And that's the goal of the Nature Center is to educate people about the wildlife and the environment of Connecticut and realize that we have some pretty spectacular animals that are found in Connecticut. So that's a big push for us. So again, Meg's Point Nature Center is closed. I know I say it over and over again. I really wish that I was able to uh, have people in the building. And as soon as we can, we'll let you know. It's probably going to be a limited basis. Maybe we'll have people sign up for time slots ahead of time. Was I embarrassed getting in, bitten in front of people? No. It's something that happens in my job. I'm handling animals a lot, and no matter how long these animals have been in captivity, I still consider them a wild animal, and it's their prerogative. If they really feel necessary to bite me, they're going to do it, and it's not on a timetable, so it's just something that happens, and we get bitten and move on and continue our education. And actually, that program, the bite was at a very useful time because I had someone sitting in the front row that was saying that uh, garter snakes don't have teeth and don't bite. That's what bit me was a garter snake. And after it bit me, I was able to show the little circle of bloody holes from the bite. So they do have teeth and they can bite. Any animal that has a mouth can bite you if they really want to. A lot of them choose not to. Um, but if you harass an animal enough or um, bother them enough, you can get bitten eventually, even with the kindest animal. Okay, I hope everybody enjoyed our little snake craft. We will put up um, the information about how you can make your own snake, and maybe we'll put up some color patterns of snakes that you can try and match. Uh, that would be a fun exercise. I think I would enjoy that. So my volunteers are all cringing right now because they're the ones that have to do all the content that I create while I'm talking. So hopefully they'll be able to find a way to create a, a matching pattern game where you can match the pattern of a snake to the snake. I think that would be fun. All right, next week at 11 o'clock, we'll start these programs again. From Tuesday to Friday, we will do these programs at 11 o'clock. If I see something out in the park very special, I will go live with it, like our Sandhill Crane. And yesterday, I almost had... Uh, opportunity to film a sand shark right off of the beach. They're not dangerous or harmful to people. They have sandpaper-like teeth. Their teeth are very small, so it just feels like sandpaper. Um, but it was swimming right along the shore, and many of our bathers got to see it and got very nervous. And I went out, but it had left uh, just before I got there. It was swimming into deeper water. So I didn't know garter snakes bite. Fortunately, never been bitten again. Uh, most snakes, most of the small snakes are not going to bite. The, the bite is not a very good defense. If you have a little tiny mouth, you know it's not going to affect something really large. So very often garter snakes have a much more uh, laid back personality about biting. Um, it's larger snakes uh, that tend to bite more often. All right. If you have questions watching this video, after it's live, you can post them and we will try and answer them. And again, I will see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock for our next program. And hopefully next week the weather will be a little more cooperative and I'll get to visit another park. I really want to go to American Legion State Forest or People's State Forest. They're right next to each other. And that was my plan for today. But with thunderstorms, again, here in Connecticut, not a good day for that. Next week, look for me to be on the road somewhere in Connecticut visiting a state park near you because everybody is near a state park. In Connecticut, you're no more than 15 minutes from a state park, and I hope everyone's getting out and enjoying our parks. So thank you all, and we will see you next time from the Meg's Point Nature Center.